Okay, so to reinforce some of the concepts from the last lecture, I just want to do a few examples with combinatorics and probability. And so the first one is, suppose that I've got a, a bag full of tiles, and these tiles have letters on them, right? So I got some Bs, and I got some As, and I got a couple of Ns, okay? So now a monkey is going to pull six of these tiles out of the bag, and I want to know what's the probability that in order those tiles spell banana, okay? So that means I've got basically six slots. And let's look at what we got. We got three Bs, five As, two Ns. So again, the probability for each individual draw is kind of the number of good outcomes over the number of total outcomes. So on the first draw, I have three Bs out of 10 outcomes, right? So that's the probability of getting a B on the first draw. Then what's left in the bag is nine tiles. And of those, five of those are A's. Then I need to pick an N, so there's two out of eight of those. Then I need to pick another A, so there's four out of seven. Then I need to pick the other N, which is one out of six. And then I need to pick another A, which is three out of five. And so now I can do a bunch of cancellations, and I can find that what I have left is uh, one over 420, right? That's the probability that on, in order, I spell out banana. So now I want to know what happens if the monkey grabs a handful of six tiles out of the bag. Can those tiles be rearranged to spell banana? Okay, what's the probability that a, a draw of six tiles can be rearranged to spell banana? So now we have to do a, a slightly different computation, right? So let's suppose that these tiles are actually uh, numbered, okay? So let's suppose I've got B1, 2, 3, a1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 1 and 2. Okay, so in this case, imagine that these actually have some, some numbers to them. Now I'm going to choose six of these 10 tiles. So how many possible draws are there? There's 10 choose 6 possibilities. And what's that number? 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 over 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Again, doing some cancellation, I can get rid of this, and I can get rid of this. So I see there's 210 uh, possible collections, assuming that I kind of preserve these numbers along with me. Or, now I have to look at how many good outcomes are there, right? So, of these, well, I have to choose one of these three Bs. So there's three choose one ways to get the B. I have to choose three out of these five As. So there's five choose three ways to get the As. And then I have to choose two out of two Ns. Like, I have to get exactly one there's only one way to get the two ends. I have to pick them both out of the bag, right? So now I can compute that the number of good outcomes is 3 times 5, 2, 3 is 10 times 1. So there's 30 good outcomes. And that means the probability of being able to rearrange to spell banana is 30 over 210 is 1 7th, OK? There's a slightly different way of thinking about this. Um, I could think about this to say, okay, suppose that the monkey picked banana out of the bag, right? Um, what's left in the bag has to be two A's and two B's. And so I can ask myself, okay, how many ways are there to leave two A's and two B's left in the bag? Thinking about it that way, that's like saying, well, there's three choose two ways to leave two B's in the bag, and five choose two ways to leave two A's in the bag. And 3 choose 2 is 3, and 5 choose 2 is 10. So here, again, there's 30 good ways to leave this in the bag. So I can do this in a different way and get the same answer. OK, so that's one example. Another example is, um, let's go back to the, the classic Avengers. OK, so the Avengers are posing dramatically for a movie poster. And I want to know uh, how many different ways are there for these six people to line up left to right. So this is a case where it's a question of how many permutations are there of six people. And that's pretty easy. We know that there are um, you know, permutations of six people is six factorial, which is six times four times three times two times one. That's 720. So there's 720 possible ways that they can line up where order matters. Okay. Now let's suppose that the Avengers are uh, going to a big battle in two cars, right? There's an SUV that can fit four people, and there's a convertible 
that can fit um, two people. Okay, and I want to know how many possibilities are there for which people choose and you know which which people are in the SUV and which people are in the convertible, right? So again, order doesn't matter. I just want to know you know how many different ways are there to put four people here and six people here where order doesn't matter. And so this is kind of like a you know uh, n choose k kind of problem where I say okay I've got six objects and I could imagine that okay I just want to choose which two go in the convertible and that's six choose two which is six times five over two which is fifteen so there are fifteen possible ways of doing it um, you could also argue well you could have just looked at six choose four right well six choose four is also the same thing. There's this kind of symmetry to the combinatorials, so actually it doesn't really matter. Okay. So now I want to know, uh, assuming that each of these 15 possibilities is equally likely, what's the probability that um, the three cool Avengers out of the six are in the car? So I guess you could argue about who are the, the cool Avengers. Um, well, Iron Man is definitely cool. Uh, Black Widow is cool. Hawkeye is really not cool. Captain America is nice, but he's not cool. And I guess we have to decide, you know, Thor used to be lame, and now he's cool, and Hulk used to be cool, and now he's lame. I I'm going to say that Thor is cool, and uh, Hulk is not. So we got three good uh, Avengers, and three, or three cool Avengers, and three uncool Avengers. Okay, and I want to know what's the probability that the cool ones are all in the same car. So you can substitute what you like for cool and uncool. Let's suppose that we've got three cool ones and three lame ones, okay? So here I can say, actually, well, if I want the three cool ones to be in the same car, the only way that can happen is that they're in the SUV. And so that means I have to have three in one car, and then there are only three possible ways that I could have a fourth person in the car. So there are three good outcomes divided by 15 possible outcomes. So the probability that um, you know, all cool ones are in the SUV is 3 out of 15 or 1 fifth. Okay. So now let's suppose that I switch it up and I say, okay, suppose that instead of uh, going to the battle in the uh, SUV in the convertible, I have two four seat SUVs SUV 1 and SUV 2. Okay, so that means that no matter what happens, there's going to be a couple of seats left over, right? Let's represent those by by blanks. Okay, so the first thing I want to know is how many possibilities are there for who is in what car? Same problem as before, except now I have a couple of extra blanks to worry about. Okay, so these blanks are uh, not distinguishable, right? Um, those empty seats, and there also could be a little bit of complication in the fact that two blanks could be in one car or they could be in the other car, right? So we have to kind of look at all the different possibilities. So there are three cases, right? Case one is that uh, SUV one is full. Uh, case two is that SUV two is full. And case three is that um, there's one empty seat in each. So let's enumerate those possibilities. How many ways are there for SUV 1 to be full? Well, from before, there's six choose four ways. I have to choose four people to put in SUV 1, and that number is 15. Same way over here, if I want SUV 2 to be full, there are six choose four ways to make that happen. And then one empty slot in each is more like this. Here there are um, basically, let's choose the three people in SUV 1. There's six choose three possibilities there. That's six times four times three, I'm six times five times four over three times two times one. So there are 20 possibilities. So overall, there are 50 possible ways things can happen. Okay. And now I have to ask what's the probability that ABC are all in the same SUV? Okay. Well, again, I can kind of count my possibilities, right? So either the extra seat is filled up with X, Y, Z, or it's filled up with a blank, right? So there's, you know, in terms of good combinations, there's four good combinations where the good guys are all in SUV1, and there's four combinations over here 
where the good guys are all in SUV2. So there's eight total good combinations, move my head around, over 50 total combinations, and so the answer is 4 out of 25. Okay, And just like before, there are different ways of thinking about, um, you know, you could do it with kind of a, a division of, of where the blanks are and so on, but this is kind of the easiest way to get to the answer. So hopefully those problems give you a little bit of insight into how to approach kind of word problem-like probability problems with the tools we talked about in the last lecture.